Yeah, hello and welcome to uh, the sales order uh, demonstration. Okay, so we're in the customer module. Uh, I'm going to go to the order. Uh, if you want to find orders, they're outstanding. Obviously, here's a list of them. Uh, open sales orders, sales order history, allocated, partially allocated. Um, you know, you can sort them, you can group them, you can search for them. Um, obviously, you've got a stage and a status against each one. Have they been printed or not, order acknowledgement or whatever. Okay, so let's just do a new sales order. Alright, so it asks me to pick uh, a particular customer. Um, so again, you can search uh, across all your customers. Um, okay, I, I'm just going to pick on this the toy customer there. Okay. So we have the sales order form. Just open it up a bit so you can see a bit more. Okay, so uh, customer PO. Um, if you can set, you can set on the customer record to um, make this unique. So uh, or demand it. Yeah, um, so I'll type in verbal, let's say. Um, yeah, okay. Um, payment terms default in, the shipping methods default in. Um, you can um, pick a different delivery address or, or create a different delivery address if you wanted to uh, on the fly. Um, so if, if I kind of uh, dwell our back orders, uh, what was the source, where did it come from, this particular order? Uh, which will def inf default in from the original one. You've got a custom fields area. Okay, so you know you can obviously have whatever custom fields we like against the sales order. I've uh, got notes. Um, okay, um, we also have an option in the customer record to pop a message. So when you do a quote or a sales order for particular customers, you know you can pop a particular message up. Uh, so let's just pick on some items. Um, okay, so I'll pick on a 17 inch wheel and a 19 inch monitor. Um, and you know, uh, two types of customers, one that kind of like want to keep stock but not kind of, you know, be stopped from shipping stuff, you know, and maybe have a delivery in but before they book the stock in, want to sell it out, well, you know, so that's kind of like ignore stock levels. So you'd kind of be probably be in this tab here, yeah, just put entering the quantities that you want. Um, or what you might be, uh, if you actually want to promise stock, yeah, as you go, yeah, then you might want to be in the advanced inventory tab which allows you to allocate as you go. Okay, so if I look on this one here, I've put in a quantity of one, it's allocated one, but if I look down here, I can see my availability. So at my main warehouse, I can see I've got 733 in stock, 227 are allocated to sales orders already, and I can drill down to see who they are. Uh, I can see I've got 506 free. Yeah, three are uh, unallocated, so they're on orders that have not been allocated yet, they're still outstanding. And I can see I've got 356 on purchase order, and I can see when they're coming in. So I know my potential stock's quite high, yeah, um, so I know that here I could allocate up to 507, because the one already there is part of the allocation, so I know if I typed in uh, 600 here, it should get 507 as the allocated, okay, which it does, yeah. It uh, allows your salespeople to promise stock. So I can be taking an order, yeah, and I can say to the customer, yeah, you can have up to 507 now or 93 on back order, or no, no, we'll, we'll ship the whole lot together. So I'll allocate none. Yeah, and when they all come in, we'll, we'll, we can allocate them via the allocation routine. Okay, so let's change this to two. All right, so we'll allocate two. Um, we're on an item, you can change the description. So here's a description of the item, but you can also add a few bits and bobs to it if you wanted to as well. Um, you can also change the price, yeah. So I can say, well, yeah, I know you usually pay twenty-five pound. I've gone on done for twenty-four pound this time. And what it does is it puts my user ID uh, on the change to say, well, yeah, that price came from the good customer price list, but yeah, uh, me as a user overrode it. Yeah. So just to kind of expand this out a bit more, so you can see. Um, okay, it automatically gets the tax code and the nominal code. Of course, you can change it on the fly. Depending on how, you know that nominal code can come from numerous places like the customer, the item, the category. You might have segments set up as well, so it gets the segment from there. Okay, so um, I can also do non-stock. Yeah, so I click on that one. Um, obviously, it doesn't allocate any, but I can over, over type this. So I can have non-stock items. Um, I can also have what's called drop ship items. Yeah, so let's say I want a, a one gig of RAM or whatever. If on the item it was set to automatically do drop ship that would be ticked but I'm going to tick this so uh, it would it would have been allocated against the stock that we had already but by ticking that box it will unallocate it so it's all allocated 
yeah uh, but it's not taking our allocation or our stock at our warehouse so um, the one gear ram um, we've clicked the drop ship box yeah so um, if I click the drop ship button yeah it'll pick up all the item lines that are drop ship it would automatically uh, pick the supplier that's attached to that item if there was one so I'm just going to say the UK supplier now I'll be able to tick it yeah and then I can create the purchase orders here and now for all the dropship items so all that does is that um, uh, creates a purchase order and puts the customer delivery address yeah as the actual shipping address yeah and it obviously marks this purchase order as a drop ship one so if I voided it it would automatically unvoid it off the sales order as well so if we look along the line a little bit here you can see the linked PO yeah is that one we just created okay um, we also have the ability to create a purchase order here and now for items you know if wanted to um, in our si uh, okay so other options in here are uh, if you assign a rep yeah automatically you can assign a rep to a customer uh, or ship to it defaults in I can change it if I want to I could even put against multiple reps and split the commission between them um, if I look down here I've got a commission tab so I can see what the commission element is to be paid on this uh, I also have a profit tab which gives me the actual profit uh, or by you know depending on what the costing methods are on the items yeah but I also have what's called a rep profit tab as well uh, so some people on some items well sorry some people like to show their reps a different cost price and margin yeah rather than the actual uh, based on average or standard so if I kind of look at the item yeah and go to costing yeah you can see I've got a rep cost here yeah as well as obviously a last cost and a standard and average cost yeah so it would mean that the rep would see uh, you know, just in case your rep goes down towards the cost price you know you would hide this tab yeah in your user role so in on, on the, so when they looked at this form yeah they wouldn't be able to see that profit tab they'd only be able to see that profit tab okay uh, we also have uh, options above here to sort of say well do I want to attach documents to it or create any activities towards it um, you know historically what they've been buying or selling or whatever uh, sales order history is quite a nice one uh, if you call the customer up and say well these are all the items they usually buy yeah that's the last price they bought it at that's the last quantity they had you know it automatically defaults that quantity in but you can change it and say oh, okay you want three of those I'll add that to the order yeah right, I'll add that to the order and you know it just allows you easily yeah to add those items to the order but also you know confirming with the customer yeah um, going through what they usually order uh, if they send you a spreadsheet of their order you can import it yeah you can go and get it as long as obviously the headers on the actual it um, spreadsheet have the item name, uh, item name and quantity uh, uh, actually if you don't got the quantity in the file it default to one if they put the price in it will default in but otherwise it will default to their normal price yeah if they can also put their co their item uh, code in as well uh, if you if you store them and it will automatically revert to ours um, okay and we can also uh, if we wanted to yeah take a receipt or payment yeah against the actual uh, order there and if we wanted to as well depending on what it is okay so let's go back to the order right so uh, when I go to print I could print an order acknowledgement I could print a picking note here and now yeah um, and that picking note if I use locations could be in location order root location order um, so it depends kind of how I operate you know some people operate off your sub sort of 20 orders a day you might kind of print off the picky note take it downstairs pick the goods you know and then come back and then convert the order to invoice um, you know so you've got the option to convert this uh, um, order to invoice if you follow the workflow and the workflow on this one is you have to print the pick note off before you can actually convert to invoice yeah otherwise it won't let you um, you know all have other customers you know hundreds of orders a day yeah and then what happens with them is you know the sales people put the orders on yeah uh, so I'll just save that yeah uh, and then what happens is someone may be in the warehouse maybe I just batch document printing print pick notes these are all the fully allocated ones yeah um, partially allocated ones you know, so usually what you do is you chip all the fully allocated ones then you start looking at the partially allocated ones so literally just select all boom yeah say okay right all the pick notes come off right let's go and pick them all yeah of course you can do it by due date or reference or whatever you want to do it as well 
Um, and then at some point, the goods, uh, that the pick note goes out to the warehouse, they pick the goods, and then they want to confirm pick. Yeah. So uh, here's an option to sort of say, okay, uh, yeah, that one's okay, that one's okay, that one's okay. Yeah, and you know, you can change the quantities. So you can say, ah, oh, I could only find one. Yeah, so when you say okay, it will create the invoice. Yeah, with one in the ship. Yeah, and one back order if you set it to back order. Yeah, so different ways of operating. So if you're if you're if you're doing hundreds of orders, you have to operate in a different way than you would if you were doing ten orders a day. Yeah, uh, we also have one other option, which is what I call confirm dispatch, which means that when you confirm, you, you would either use the confirm pit routine that takes it to invoice, or you'd use this one. Yeah, and this is exactly the same basically but when this actually converts uh, confirms picks it 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 changes the status on the order to dispatched doesn't so it doesn't create the invoice yeah it creates the back order immediately yeah um and allows you yeah but to invoice um uh, based on uh, you know just one invoice per order no problem yeah or you could consolidate yeah based on daily or weekly or monthly or whatever yeah um you know orders for the same customer, so you could do that daily, weekly, monthly, whatever. Yeah, if you wanted to do it, you don't have to obviously consolidate this route. Um, but some people have got that faster moving stock, and that for, uh, it takes them a bit longer to pick. So ergo, what happens is they want to create the back order immediately. So that in theory, you could be picking the original order, yeah, and then more stock comes in, you allocate it out, and you could be picking the back order almost at the same time before you've even kind of confirmed <laughs> picked on the other one. Yeah, um, so. Um, that's your kind of order processing um, in a nutshell. We also have what's called an allocate free stock routine. So um, this would usually be run before you uh, print your pick notes. Yeah, so if I kind of go here, you can do it by item line, customer rank, sales order, or whatever. Yeah, so this lists all the outstanding sales orders that have not had the picking note printed. And then what you do is these are all the allocations to these to these orders, and you'd usually go auto allocate. So any stock that's come in, you basically auto allocate it out, and then what happens is you print the pick notes, yeah, and then set, and then obviously uh, confirm pick. Okay, thanks very much. Okay, bye.